Hi everyone, my name is Christina and today I'm in the York Region Food Network Kitchen because we're going to be baking together. So right now it's fall, which means we're seeing pumpkins and apples in grocery stores and farms all across York Region. And pumpkins are usually used this time of year to signify the fall harvest and to use as decorations for Halloween and we're eating them also in pumpkin pies. Pumpkins are seen across so many different cultures all over the world and are eaten in so many different ways. So sometimes we see them in stews and curries and stir fries, but today we're going to be doing something a little different. Usually when we're cooking or baking with pumpkin, we're using the flesh. So that's the inside of the pumpkin where it gets sweet and it lends a lot of flavor. Um, and we don't really use much else. Sometimes we use seeds and roast them and those can be used in salads. But when we're thinking of the pumpkin, we don't really think about the pumpkin guts. Those are the parts that we usually dispose of. But today we're going to be a little creative and do something fun with it. We're going to be making a pumpkin gut bread. So this is kind of like using the whole animal approach. We're going to be using something that we usually throw away and it's just going to be something experimental and fun for us to do. So the first step of the, the recipe is that we're going to cut the pumpkin open because that's how we're going to get to the guts. So taking a small knife, um, I have one that's ridged here and that's better for carving, but you can use a small paring knife. We're going to cut the hole. And try to be as careful as you can. Uh, make sure if you're not comfortable using a knife, you're asking an adult to help you because this part is a little tricky. So I've cut my hole and now I'm going to remove the top. If you made a jack-o'-lantern before, you'll be familiar with this process. So look at this. So it's kind of mixed with, the guts are kind of mixed with the seeds. Um, we're going to have to take some time to take it, separate it and take it apart. Um, so a spoon is handy at this time. We're going to scrape the insides and then um, separate the seeds and then we'll have the guts left. So this is what it looks like on the inside and we're going to scrape along the sides and trying to get as much as we can. It's quite fibrous, but that's okay. Um, and we're just going to pull as much as we can, but we're only going to need two cups. So we might have more than we need, but that's okay. Um, I'm just going to empty out in the bowl. So I finished separating my seeds from the guts and um, this is what I have left. It was kind of a time consuming task, but it's okay if you have some helpers. It's a really fun way to get your hands literally dirty. Um, but now that I have this, all the stringy parts left, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them up finely just so that it's not stringy when we're baking it. If you have a food processor or um, a blender, this is also a good way to cut up um, the guts as well. But I'm just going to use my hands and a knife and that should work fine. So I have about two cups here. Oop, I have a stray, I have some stray seeds. It's okay, I'm going to pull them out. Um, and yeah, if it's very liquid li liquidy, so I'm not too worried about if you were to blend it up, um, it should be okay. But we are using some water in the recipe as well. So if you wanted to add the water with the pumpkin guts as you're blending it, that's also okay. It's a good way to make sure that everything is nice and pureed. All right, so now I have my pumpkin guts cut up um, and it sounds a little gruesome, but it's just the insides where it was fibrous and stringy. Um, 
they're it's such a beautiful orange color it's so nice and festive and vibrant i know it's going to look amazing once the bread is baked it's going to have a nice deep orange color well that's what i'm hoping for anyway so i'm just going to put it in my bowl here and i'm going to go ahead and start mixing the ingredients of my pumpkin gut bread so I have my sugar measured out here in a large bowl. There's three cups of sugar in here, and we're going to mix the rest of our wet ingredients in here. So it's a little strange, but when it comes to baking, sugar is often seen as a wet ingredient. It dissolves nicely, or we want it to dissolve nicely with other wet ingredients, so that's usually why it's added alongside other wet ingredients. So I have half a cup of water here. And then I'm going to add one cup of a neutral oil. So I'm using grapeseed oil, but you can use vegetable oil or canola oil um, or avocado oil. Those are great ones to use. You don't really want to use something that has too much flavor, but if you do, you'll just have a nice flavor of whatever oil you choose. So in goes my oil. And then to my bowl, I'm going to crack in four eggs. So with my whisk, I'm going to go ahead and mix everything together until the sugar is mixed in and combined. My egg mixture is all whisked together, so I'm going to add in my pumpkin. And I'm just going to make sure that it's evenly mixed in together. The next step is to work on the dry ingredients. So I have three and a half cups of flour that's measured out in here. And to that, I'm going to add in my spices and my baking soda. So the first thing I'm going to start with is my cinnamon. I'm going to add in two teaspoons of cinnamon, one teaspoon of nutmeg, one teaspoon of salt, and half a teaspoon of cloves. I'm also going to be adding two teaspoons of baking soda. So another fun thing about this recipe, um, I will tell you about as I mix up my dry ingredients, is that you can kind of play around with the spices. So today I didn't add ground ginger, but that's totally an option that you can do. Um, if you have pumpkin, pu pumpkin pie spice, that's also something that you can add because it already has all the cinnamon and nutmeg and cloves added in. It's just an easy to go form that you can pick up from the grocery store. Now that I've mixed my dry ingredients together, I'm going to add in my wet ingredients. So I'm just going to mix everything until I no longer see any streaks of white flour. You want to be careful not to overmix, otherwise your pumpkin bread will end up being a little tough. If you want to add any other things like chocolate chips or raisins or nuts, um, you can add up to one cup of those ingredients. Um, and then also just a little tip is usually I find the bottom of the bowl is where all the flour is. So as you're mixing, you just kind of scrape the bottom of the bowl with your spatula and you'll see a lot of flour is still there. So you just want to make sure that's all incorporated. Otherwise, once it's baking, it doesn't really become, it doesn't really change and it just is still streaks of white. So as I'm mixing, I'm not really seeing any more of those white streaks of flour, which I know that it means it's fully mixed at this point. So I'm going to stop because I don't want to overmix. And now, um, so this recipe makes two loaves of 
pumpkin bread, which means there's one for yourself and one for you to share with a friend. Um, I'm going to line each of my loaf pans with some parchment paper, and this will help to prevent any sticking. But actually, before I do that, I'm going to put some oil into each of the pans and coat it with the oil at the sides just to make sure it doesn't stick. We want to make sure we can get our, our treats out. So I have a paper towel. I'm just going to run the oil around, just spread it so that it coats the pan, but there's no puddles of oil. And then onto my second one. And I didn't really pour too much in here. I just poured like a little drizzle. You don't really need much because um, a little bit goes a long way. Okay, so I have my two loaf pans and I'm going to line them each with parchment paper. Now I don't really um, line the parchment paper so that it covers all the sides. I just cut enough so that I can put some this way. And then there's some parchment paper hanging out on the sides. That way when it's done cooking, I can actually lift it up easier. But you just have to be mindful that sometimes, depending on the height of your oven, the sides might um, touch the top. And you have to be careful that it doesn't flap inwards when it's baking. So I just have to fold the side here. And that should help it stay away from our, our pumpkin bread. So I'm going to do the same with my second loaf. Okay, so now that my loaf pans are lined, I'm going to pour in my batter and I'm going to try to make sure it's as evenly distributed as possible. So now that I have my loaf pans filled, they're going to go in a preheated oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 50 minutes to an hour. It depends on your oven. If your oven tends to run hotter, you can check it a bit earlier. Um, and then we're going to do the toothpick test and see if it's fully cooked. Um, so I'm going to put this in the oven and I'm going to clean up and we're going to come back to freshly baked loaves. My loaves just came out of the oven and they smell so good. It smells like cinnamon and all the fall spices that we love during this time of year. Um, they're pretty hot right now, so I'm gonna have to let them cool for quite a while. Um, it did take a long time in the oven, so just a heads up if you wanna bake this. It does take probably around the hour mark, even a bit longer, but um, yeah, it was really fun to do and I'm excited to give it a taste later on. And the fun thing is, I have still so much of the pumpkin that I can use to create other things. So these are the seeds that I separated from earlier and I can totally make um, roasted pumpkin seeds with my oven on still. Um, and then I have my pumpkin here that I can maybe carve like a face into as a jack-o'-lantern or decoration or I can just cut it open and then roast the, the pumpkin so that I can eat the, squ uh, the, the pumpkin. So thank you for joining me today and it was so much fun. I hope you try this recipe out and let me know how it goes. Um, if you also have other fun ways to use the pumpkin guts, please share with us and I hope you enjoy.